Okay, this is a calculation example. It's a very straightforward one. It says that a car is travelling round a band of radius 500 meter on a flat road, which is banked at an angle theta, so pretty classic. The car is assumed to be moving at constant speed, so the circular motion that we are studying in your syllabus all will have constant speed. Because if the speed is not constant, we need more calculus and nobody needs more calculus at this point, right? Anyway, in a horizontal circle, so in physics, right, whenever you see this term horizontal circle, you should think, okay, lah, there's a high chance that this thing is going to be that 3D thing where I need to resolve some forces. And there's no tendency to slip. So if there's no tendency to slip, this means we omit friction. Friction only exists if there is this thing slipping or moving around, right? So we omit friction or we ignore friction. Okay, so see, if there is no frictional force acting on the car down the slope when it is traveling at 90 km per hour, okay, I see what you do there. I better remember to convert this to meter per second. This is V, okay? Find the value of theta. So we are looking or we are seeking theta. Step one, determine the center of the circle. Okay, teacher, I, I see enough video. Liao. I know the center is somewhere here. Lah. Okay? Because this is a bank track. Again, if you need help, rewind the video. You will see there are different, different ways I draw the track. Even show you a video of some cyclists. Okay? Now here, uh, what we will do is we will label the forces. That is step two. We're going to label all the forces acting on the car. Obviously, we have our good old steady weight mg okay mg will pull the car downwards we will also have normal force so my friends normal force as usual must be 90 degree or so normal force will be in this direction uh. they label for you already uh, very nice mm. thank you uh. okay so i have also proven that this angle is the same as this angle so you can watch the previous part of the video but now what i'll do is i'll do step two, three okay step one find c all right here again Step two, label forces, all forces. Thankfully, there is no friction. Step three, resolve to the direction of C. Okay, let's resolve. So we have one component in this direction and the other component that is in this direction. The force that is to the direction of C is this force. And this force doesn't have angle, no angle. So this will be N sine theta. No angle, we use sine. And beside the angle, I use cos. Okay, this will be N cos theta. So once you resolve the forces, hopefully it will be clear to you what equations you can write. So this one will be step four. Okay, where the unbalanced net force is equal to resultant force. And why is the unbalanced net force same thing as this n sine theta? They are the same thing. So I'm going to write that equation first. What I'll have is n sine theta is equal to Fc. Um, do we have an equation for centripetal force? Well, yes, we do, because we have watched the previous video. Okay, I'm going to use mv square over r, where r is the radius of the circular track. So here to here is your r. Okay, I'm drawing this in 2D. So you may not be able to see the circle, because the circle is actually on the plane that is, this side, uh, the plane that is, you know, going into the paper. But this is the circle. The car moves like that. Okay, the car will go towards you, turn and go away from you, in and out of the plane. So this is your radius r. I'm going to put that in. N sine theta is equal to mv square over r. Stuck, nothing to do. Too many unknown. I don't know n. Look, the only thing I know is v and r. Look at the equation. I only know v and r. So until my equation exists in v, r and theta, I cannot solve. There's V, there's R, there's theta, but there's N and there's M and shoosh. so much work. Okay, so right now, 
what we can do is we will write the second equation. Okay, so the next one would be the force that is balanced. N cos theta will be equal to mg. Oh, hmm, two equations. One sign, one cause. What should we do, uh, guys? I think we shall divide them. So hopefully you are also familiar enough with dynamics to see if you have a sine theta and a cos theta. You can divide them. Uh. So then the n will cancel and sine theta over cos theta is tangent theta. Okay, let's try that. So n sine theta over n cos theta. n sine theta for, from equation 1 is mv squared over r. And then n cos theta from equation 2 is mg. Let's take out the chopping knife and start resort. I mean, cancelling the like terms. N and N will cancel. M and M will cancel. Sine theta over cos theta is tangent theta. Fuyo. Okay, and what would this one be? This would be V square over, scroll a bit, running out of space, V square over RG. Wow, like that. Ah. Yellow. Do we have V? Yes, we do. V is 90 kilometer per hour. Do we have R? 500 meter. Okay, can We can substitute now. I'll write here for you. V is equal to 90 kmh and R is 500 meter. Unfortunately, this thing ain't in meter per second. So we got, we got, we got to convert a bit. So it's either you remember that you should divide by 3.6 or if you don't, then you convert no? 90 kilometer divide by hour. Okay, so if I want to change or get away, get rid of km, I'll put km here. Okay, and this will be 1000 meter. So I like to do this kind of fractional conversion because I can check whatever that is inside this blue bracket is 1. Okay, and then I'll repeat again for hour. I don't want hour to be there, so I'll put one hour on top here. And one hour is 3600 second. What am I doing here? I'm converting meter, I mean kilometer per hour to meter per second. And here's what happens. Km and Km will cancel. Hour and hour will cancel. Okay, lor, so what do we have now? We have V is equal to 90 times 1000 divided by... 3006. So it's actually 90 divided by 3.6. So I have done enough to know that if I want to convert V to meet, I mean kilometer per hour to meter per second, I divide by 3.6 lah. But if you don't, this is also okay. Shouldn't take you time. Because now I'm explaining it to you. So it seems like it's a long time, but actually it's not. So it's 25. Okay. So from here, this will be 25 square over r is 500 meter so i'm going to put 500 here times 9.81 okay so 25 square divided by 500 divided by 9.81 this will be 0 0.127 tangent theta so what are we looking for? We're looking for theta. So you can tangent inverse this answer. And that would give you 7.26 or 7.3 degree. Of course, this cannot be too big. La. This is just a normal road you build on a ramp going home. Okay. If it's too, if it's too, too steep. And what will happen is that uh, some accidents will happen. Uh, all right. So this is an example of calculation. So in CIE, normally what we'll do, they will do is they will maybe ask you to resolve the force or find the force in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction, that kind of thing. Uh. Okay. So what we did was we found C, resolve the forces in the direction that where one force will be directed towards C, to provide centripetal force and sine theta equal to fc okay and then the second thing that we are doing is mg needs to be balanced with n cos theta so up force will be equal to down force so that's how we arrive at this equation one and equation two 
And then we substituted, I mean, we first we simplified by dividing them. And we get this tangent theta is equal to v squared over rg. Okay, so you can see here that tangent theta is 0. Point, I mean, substituting, and we get theta is 7.3 degrees. A note here that everything here has to be si. Because g is 9.81 meter per second, this means v squared and r have to be in si. Okay, a few last things to note before I end this video is that theta is dependent on v and r, especially v. So the faster you go, let's say your v increase, the more you have to tilt. Or as theta increase, v increase. The faster the car will have to drive on the ramp. If not, the car will not be able to maintain the circular part and he will either slide down, probably will slide down. So if you remember that wall of death thing that Miss Ellie showed you in the introduction videos on the chapter, you will notice that when the car slows down, it will actually travel down the wall. Speed up will travel up the wall. Okay, so that is something interesting to note. All right, so that's it for this video. What have you learned? You have learned that when it comes to three-dimensional centripetal motion, forces needs to be resolved okay how to decide which direction to resolve look at the center of the circle okay all forces will be directed towards the center of the circle so you need to look at the force and figure out which one you're going to resolve as mentioned few times in this video okay and then based on that we can form two equations okay these are my two equations the first one would be unbalanced force provides centripetal force the balance force is being counterbalanced by mg. That's why the car didn't topple over or slide down. Especially topple over. Lah. You don't want the car to fall on the side. Okay, so that's it. In the next videos, I'm going to discuss a bunch of different different scenarios, including pendulum. Lah, pendulum that move in a horizontal circle. Um, we'll talk about aircraft lifting. So check out those videos if you need a bit more... Uh, confirmation about your ideas and understanding about horizontal 3D circular motion. And I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.